All right, so here we are in the Chatfield dashboard. Let's start building out this lead nurturing bot for Huawei. As always, we're gonna start with the welcome message. You can think of this like the homepage of a website. It's the very first message users will see when they interact with the bot. I'm gonna begin by adding a text element where we greet the user, hi, first name, and then we'll ask them, do you have what it takes to win the Honor 10 smartphone? As a reminder, users who go through each of the five challenges in this bot will be entered to win one of these devices. So that's the incentive we're giving them here. And then before we actually subscribe them to the sequence, we wanna get their opt-in. To do that, we'll add a quick reply and we'll give them a yes or no option. If they say no, we'll take them to a block that essentially leads them to a dead end and won't subscribe them to receive these daily messages. So I'll call this opt out. I'll link that quick reply to the block. And here we can say something like, no problem, thanks anyway. Okay, and for organization we can call this did not subscribe. Okay, cool. So on the welcome message, we're greeting the user. If they opt in, we'll then subscribe them to the sequence. But before we can do that, we need to actually create the sequence itself. So I'll click add sequence, choose sequence, and let's call this daily challenges. Now, users who click yes will get the messages and plugins below that quick reply. So I'll add a plugin, specifically the subscribe to sequence. And now I can choose the sequence daily challenges from that list. Awesome. So the basic setup here at a high level, the user goes in, if they say yes, one day later, given the current timing that we have set up, they're gonna receive this first message. Users who opt out aren't gonna receive anything, obviously. Okay, so now in this daily challenges sequence, and of course we can change the timing of these messages that get sent out, but for the time being, we are just going to use the basic setup that we have, the default timing here. I'm gonna rename this first block, just again for my own organization so I know what's happening in the bot. I'm gonna call this photo challenge for day one, and then for day two, we'll call it megapixel question. Okay, cool. And for the sake of time, I'm only gonna build out two of these sequences or two of these daily messages. So I'll delete the third one here. Okay, great. So when we're building the daily messages for the sequence, it's really best practice to keep it very short and concise, the initial message that you send. Then you wanna include some sort of call to action there where users can actually engage and initiate the challenge. So what would that look like? Let's add a text element here on the first day and we'll say challenge number one is now available. We can add a button here that says something like unlock or start quiz. And then we can link this to the block where that quiz is initiated. So I'm gonna create a new group for the first day challenge. I'll call this day one photo challenge and create a block for the first question of this challenge, this quiz, and then I can link that block Q1 to the button here. So first day, user sees this message, challenge one is now available, then they can go to engage and unlock that challenge and complete it for the day. One more thing to mention before diving into the quiz itself for this first day is subscription management. In other words, you always wanna give users the ability to easily unsubscribe and opt out, even if they've already subscribed. So to do that, what we would wanna set up is a quick reply here, simply saying unsubscribe or stop notification, something to that effect. And then right below that quick reply, since we're not connecting to it to a block where it's redirecting people, we'll just add the unsubscribe from sequence plugin and we'll type in the name of the sequence or it'll automatically populate here, daily challenges, right? So we'll wanna include this on every sequence message that we send. If they're no longer interested, even though there is that smartphone as an incentive and an end goal, then they can click on subscribe and opt out so they won't receive any future messages from this sequence, which is super, super important. Okay, so let's now start building out the photo challenge here. This was a brilliant idea by Huawei where essentially they show an image to the user 
and then the user has to determine whether that was taken on the Honor 10 device or by a professional photographer. Obviously, part of this brand awareness and lead nurturing is showing off the features of the phone so it stays top of mind in shoppers' brains. So I'm gonna upload the first image here, which was taken by the Honor 10, and then we'll add some quick replies that say Honor 10 or Pro Photographer. Okay, and now we can link each of these responses to a block that says either yes, that was correct, or no, that was incorrect. Okay, so for the Honor 10 one, since that's the correct answer, I'll call this Q1 correct. I'll create that corresponding block and link it, and I'll say, you're right. This was taken on the Honor 10. Okay, cool. And then I'll write a similar message for the second one. So I'll call this Q1 incorrect. And if they choose that option, I'll say, believe it or not, this photo was taken on the Honor 10. Okay, great. So I have this first question created. After that, if I want, I could create a question two block here, and then using the send block on each of the responses to the first question, I can then just redirect users to that second question so I don't have to create multiple variations of it. Okay, great. So the user goes in, they answer, Based on that answer, they get an either correct or incorrect response. Then it sends them to the second question. Again, for the sake of time, I'm not gonna continue building this out. Hopefully you get the idea. But the key final piece here of this first challenge is that on the last block, so when users get all the way until the end, and it doesn't matter, at least in Huawei's case, whether people answer these questions correctly or incorrectly, it just mattered that they went through the entire flow. So on the last block here, we want to add a user attribute that we'll call it challenge one, in this case, since it's the first day, is complete. So we wanna set up this custom attribute for each of the challenges so that later, which I'll talk about in a couple minutes, when we go to pick the winner, we make sure that they've actually completed all five, or in this case, all two of the challenges that we designed. So that's really important. Make sure to set up that attribute before taking the campaign live if you wanna replicate this same process. Okay, great. And then finally, let's do the day two challenge. To do that, I'm going to go to the megapixel question block that I've created here, and let's just copy the same text from before we'll say challenge two is now available. Like before, we'll also add a quick reply so they can unsubscribe if they so choose. Choose the unsubscribe from sequence and type in daily challenges. Great, so we'll get the second message and now we have to link the call to action here. So I'll create a new group, call this day two megapixel question doesn't quite fit, but that's all right. Okay, and then we'll say unlock now and link that to a block here. We'll, we'll call this question. Okay, so unlock now, we'll link that to question on day two, perfect. So they get this message, they click unlock now, it takes them here, and then we'll create a bit of a different question here, not so much a game or a quiz, but just an open-ended question. What we're gonna do is add a text card and we're gonna ask the user how many megapixels they think the Honor 10 has. We're also going to provide them a link to the website, again, with the goal of brand awareness in mind. So then they can go to that website, find the megapixel information, and then enter that in themselves. So we'll say, how many megapixels does the Honor 10 camera have? If we want, we can also add an image here, which I so happen to have to spice things up a little bit. Okay, so how many megapixels does the Honor 10 camera have? And then below this, we can add a user input plugin. Uh, but before I do, let me link to the site here. So we'll say, hit the books, for example, so they can do some research. We'll link this to honor.com slash 10, for example, okay? And then once they determine that answer using the website, 
They can then type in a response using the user input plugin. We won't ask any question here because we're already asking it up here. And then we can save this to an attribute called megapixels. Perfect. Now, as you could imagine, just like before, at the end of this, we want to tag these users who completed the challenge. So just like before, we'll add a user attribute plugin. In this case, we'll call it challenge2 and then say that is complete, right? We can also, in the user input plugin up here, validate this as a number. So if they say, I don't know, or something like that, we can force them to enter in a number as a response before saying that they completed the challenge. Okay, so we have all of these daily challenges set up. So now, let's say it's two days after we launched this campaign, we wanna go in and figure out who the winner was, right? We can pick them randomly from that list. To do that, we'll go into the People tab, and we can filter based on the attributes we set up. So I've previously assigned some people to these groups, so we have some data to work with. So I'll say if challenge one is complete, and we'll add another condition, if challenge two is complete, then we'll see a list of all of these users. Of course, we could then export using the export button this data into a spreadsheet, a CSV file where we could randomly pick a winner, or we could just you know, scroll down the people tab here and randomly pick somebody. But this is how you can set up a lead nurturing bot where you're picking a giveaway winner. And it's super effective as you saw the brand Huawei was able to get a 60% retention rate, which is significantly higher than mobile apps. And why not take this approach, right? It's innovative, it's intuitive, and it's fun for the end user.